Here we go, factor of safety, a fundamental concept you must understand before taking your FE and PE exam. Let's start by reading that problem statement. So we're told a cylindrical rod with a diameter of 60 millimeters is constructed from steel and has a known yield strength of 350 megapascal. The rod is designed to withstand a working load of 355 kilonewtons without yielding. The factor of safety is what? So you know what I'm about to tell you now. Pause the video and attempt this on your own. Struggle through it and you want to be struggling through all these practice problems. You want to be doing them on your own because you're building your own skills, your own problem solving that you're going to apply on exam day. And this is what I'm telling my students all the time in my civil FE review course, a review course that's designed with this in mind. We're going to focus on practice, do a lot of practice problems to help you build the right problem solving abilities. And most importantly, to help you tackle these problems with confidence. And with that confidence, you're going to apply that on exam day. You're going to use the most efficient time saving skills and you're going to be comfortable to give this exam your best shot. If you're interested in the civil FP review course, check out the link in the description below. Let's start by visualizing what we're given. So we know we're given in this case a cylindrical rod. So let's draw that real quick. So it will have a circular cross sectional area. So when they say rod, always visualize something like this with a circular cross sectional area. So the diameter of this rod, let's call that D for diameter, that's 60 millimeters, that's given. Then we know that it has a known yield strength for steel. So the material in this case will be steel. It's a steel rod. So we will say this is made out of steel and it does have a yield strength for this material, for this steel. So that is going to be our sigma Y. Sigma stands for the stress or yield strength. Y stands for the yield strength. Yield is going to be our Y. So that's going to be 350 mega Pascal. So that is taken care of. Then we're told the rod is designed to withstand a working load of 355 kilonewtons. So we can imagine a load induced on this rod and that's going to be the load P of 355, we'll call that 355 kilonewtons without yielding. So the critical state that we want to be below is yielding. Sometimes it's the ultimate stress, sometimes it's rupture, likely it's not rupture, we want to avoid that, but sometimes it is the ultimate stress. In this one, we're focused on yielding, so we want to be below that yield point. So that's given. So now what we want to find is what we want to find the factor of safety. So we'll call the FS for factor of safety. Getting into that solution, let's first start by defining what we mean by the factor of safety using a basic definition. Have this on your equation sheet. So we'll say the factor of safety is going to be the favorable that goes on top divided by something we call the unfavorable, the opposite of favorable on the bottom. So favorable divided by unfavorable. Now you might be asking, what do we mean by that? So it really depends. So in this particular case, it's a specific case where we're dealing with stresses. But I want you to know it can be applied to anything. It can be favorable forces divided by unfavorable forces. It can be favorable moments divided by unfavorable moments. It can be shear stresses, tensile stresses, compressive stresses, and so on. That's why this idea of factor safety is so important and we must understand what it really means. So in our case, the favorable is going to be the stuff that's resisting failure. This is actually, in this particular case, the strength of the material. This is the strength of the material, and it's actually the yield strength in this case, because we want to focus on the goal without yielding. If it was without, let's say, the ultimate stress, we would use the ultimate strength. In this one, it's the yield strength, and that's going to be the favorable. That's what's resisting failure. So keep that in mind. When we say favorable, it's the stuff resisting failure. And in this case, it's the yield strength. So what we can say is further simplify it for this case as the yield strength that goes on top, the favorable. And this is going to be divided by the unfavorable. So what's unfavorable? This is the stuff causing failure. And the stuff causing failure is going to be due to the load, the working load, which acts 
on a cross-sectional area. This is the induced load acting on this rod that's trying to cause it to fail. So we know what we can say for the unfavorable is going to be something called the working stress. So we can put that at the bottom as the working stress. And this also we can call the design stress. So let's just put design next to that. So the working stress or the design stress. Now we can finally simplify this a little bit further and denote it as sigma for the yield. So we know sigma yield strength is the yield strength of the material. This is our sigma y and that sigma y is favorable. Once again, it's the inherent strength of the material. We get this in the lab. We do a tensile test or let's say a compressive test. We get that in the lab. That's the favorable resisting failure. Then at the bottom, this is the working stress and that we can call our sigma failure. So this is sigma failure and sometimes you see this as sigma allowable. So we see this often, let's say for civil, we see this for bearing capacity and other problems. So we can denote this as our sigma allowable. Sometimes we see it like that. It's the working stress. With that definition, we can solve this. So we can say our sigma y is going to equal to what? That sigma y is just given 350 megapascals and I'm going to keep it as megapascals and we'll see the units cancel at the end. Then our sigma allowable is going to be what? This is the induced working stress. So we will say that right there is going to be the 355. So we'll say it's going to be the 355. And what I'm going to do is convert that to newtons. I want to convert it to newtons because I know one megapascal is going to equal to one newton per millimeter squared. So my force units, I'm going to keep in newtons and my area, I'm going to keep in millimeter squared because I know that's one megapascal. And I'm just going to keep this as 350 megapascals. At the end, the units of megapascal will cancel and we're going to be fine. So what I'll do is convert that 355, which is the load. So I'm going to take that times 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 3. And that would be in newtons and you divide this by the area because we're taking the load divided by the area that gives us the stress, the allowable working stress. And in this case, the area is just the area for a circle. So this is a circular cross section. The area will be the area of a circle. So what we will do is go down here. The area of our circle is always pi and we take the diameter, which is 60 millimeters and we square this divided by four. That's the area on bottom load over area and notice the units we're going to get newton per millimeter squared and that's always one megapascal so that's the fast way to do this so what we will do let me see using my calculator i'm going to plug this in 355 e to the three you divide this by pi 60 squared divided by four so we should get a value of 125 point let me carry three decimal places usually is the safest so we will take th five, five and round that next five to a six. And that will give me megapascal because we get Newton per millimeter squared. Again, that's always one megapascal. With that, we can plug this stuff back in for the factor of safety. So our sigma yield is going to be the 350 megapascal. And we take this divided by the sigma allowable. The working stress is going to be 125.556 megapascal. And then this will give us the value. So we take the 350 divided by 125.556 and we should get something close to 2.78. And from the answer choices, that should be B. That should be B for that. So it's going to be that one is our answer. And this is really saying that the allowable stress that we have is going to be less than the yield stress which remember that yield stress is the point where we have failure that's the ultimate threshold that's the maximum level so we want to make sure when we're designing that design stress that we have acting on this rod is below that and we want to be safer in this case by approximately a factor of 2.78 if that factor of safety was one we would just be at that limit that that yield stress would equal to the working stress, which is our sigma allowable. That would be like a factor of safety of one. And that's something we do not want. And obviously we don't want it to be below one. One is like equilibrium. We're just at that level. 
but then we want to increase that factor of safety to be safer because we want to ensure that we're well below the maximum yield strength of this material. So the answer should be 2.78 for the factor of safety.